Hey guys, I have Iron here doing a Monarchy review, this time with the Gurren Mark II. A Monarchy made by Bandai way back in 2008. Yeah, this is a, a very old kit. A 2008 kit. That's almost like, what, 15 years? Right right now? It's 2024. 2008. Sounds about right. 15, 13, 15 years. Yeah. But overall, this is a pretty nice model kit. Aesthetically wise, it's beautiful and all that. It is very very glossy i kind of forgot about that like right now with the light and whatnot you probably see it this thing is way glossier which is kind of a uh, show and whatnot <sighs> kind of wish i had the box art for the uh gurin because i do i do have it somewhere but i know the monica for this i didn't break down but on the box art this thing is not as glossy so like compared this to any old other model kit uh yeah let's go right here let's go with the entry grade right here you can see right here the entry grade not as glossy. The Mark II. Very glossy. And this is not even the coding coding because this is another version of the Gurren Mark II. That came out back in 2010, so like two years later. That's a royal coat coating. And that thing's way more shinier. So the fact that this is very glossy is uh, very, very noticeable. But overall, it's still pretty nice design wise. I do like it. It's uh, aesthetically it's beautiful and all that. It's one of my favorite model kits. But without a way, let's go with everything the Gurren Mark II comes with. So here's everything the Gurren Mark II really comes with, which isn't really that much when it's cold. It comes with an extra manipulator hand, which is the blade right here, as you can see right here. Pretty nice of design. Though this is, I will say, this is one of the things some people kind of hate about the Code GS kits. It is with the cold. Uh, unlike most gun kind of model kits and whatnot that you see nowadays where uh, the hands and whatnot can be separated, this thing is molded together. So I know there's going to be some people that are going to gripe about this being designed this way. It is what it is. Can't really blame it. It is an older model kit. This is, very, but still nice to design. The only thing you gotta do is paint. Uh, uh, what's it called color paint it accurately. Which I think I think this blade's like black with a little bit of pinkish because of the how it's designed in the show and whatnot. Uh, what's it called? It's got his um Harkin cannon right here. As you can see, it's the one single wire with the one um Harkin slasher. There we go. Which is basically the grappling hook and whatnot for the design for this, which uh goes. In here, as you can see right here, it goes right in here. So let's slide that out right there. As you can see, boosh, slides out pretty nice. Little piece right there. And then you just attach this right here onto the kit. And then boom, now it is launching at something. Either going to, it's either grappling onto what's it called, a wall or whatnot, so I can climb up. Or it's attacking an enemy and trying to disable them. Usually in the show, they go for the heads because the head monitor. And then afterwards, the machine becomes useless, which is kind of dumb. It's like, what, you don't have chest monitor cameras? Gundams do. Why don't you? Uh, but we're not going to not keep that on there. I will say this. It took me a while to find some of these pieces because what's it called? I had these kind of lost over a good period of time. You do not know the struggle. I went through just trying to find all of these. Oof. I does not want to get back on there. Why do we not want to get back on it? Come on. Just hook on. Not ah, there we go. Ooh. Good. Back on there. I was a little bit worried. Uh what's it called? Also comes with a action base right here, which basically it's a little bit designed so for this. Uh, which also let me tell you, it's been a while since so I've actually did this. This is actually one of the two double Action bases, which I have not done in years for these. But they're meant to, like, for all these uh, action poses and whatnot that you do. So, you're going to have to get in, like, an action pose going through that fighting against another machine. And then, um, one of the other things, too. We have the miniature figure of Colin on here. I can see right there. It's pretty nice to design. It's her in, in her, uh, basically, in pilot mode, which, basically, she's unseated with the cockpit or whatnot for the mobile suit. There are two versions. This is one basically her in the compact, which you see right here. And there's another one with her basically standing and doing just a regular standing pose and whatnot. Uh, I have no clue where that one went. I was desperately trying to find that. I'm kind of sad I didn't find it. Uh, but it's basically the same thing, just standing up, right? That one actually is painted. I like the Copic one, which I didn't paint because I kind of already put it in there and it was already put away. Uh, but what's it called? Yeah, that's everything the Gurren Mark II actually comes with. It's actually pretty nice. It's, I mean, it's not a lot, but this is a pretty uh, pretty simplistic model kit. So, pretty much it. 
Now let's go with the articulation for this. Okay, articulation for the Mark II. Let's go very nice and simple. Let's go with the head, which can rotate around. No problem at all. Just got to be careful. It's a little spinny. It can uh, go it can wiggle around like that. No problem at all. Arm right here. Can twist around. No problemo. Can go back and forth. Pretty easy. This arm right there is on a single joint, so it can bend all the way there. It can actually, the arm is actually able to spin, so it has a, like a circle peg thing, so right there, so it actually can spin around to do like its poses. So it actually can bend pretty far depending on where you have it uh, molded in. So it can do like its attacks and whatnot, as you can see in the show. So you can use arm cannon and whatnot. No problem at all. Uh, but what's it called? It's hand. It's able to rotate, no problemo. No problem. Pretty nice. Then we go with its fancy right arm. Oh, and another thing too about these, uh, the arms are able to actually move. They're able to go out slightly that way, so it's a, you got a pretty nice movement going on because this thing is very, very posable and flexible in the show. So it's the fact that they would do that is pretty nice. Its arm right here, very scary claw arm right here, the radiant wave surger arm. They're able to do the same thing. Rotate around, no problem at all. Pose out, as you can see right there. Uh, going from there, it's able to bend. This goes from right normal form right here. It's able to bend, no problem. It's actually able to bend all the way, so it's actually pretty nice. Just uh, just make sure you pose the arm there, so you want to bend it like all the way. You can do that. Arms able to pose, no problemo. It's able to spin its hand, no problem at all. Uh, it's able to move back and forth the hand, no problem. And then it's all of its fingers are movable, so that's actually pretty nice. They're sandwiched between uh, two um, uh, pieces right there, as you can see right there with the line right there. So they're able to fit around, move around. Pretty nice, so you have like pretty nice movement there. So going from the arms, we got the torso, which it's got a bit of an eye punch right there. Not a lot. It's how it's designed, but it's pretty nice. Uh, with the cold, it's able to move uh, left and right, not too much on the, on that because what's called the way the torso is designed, the U thing is kind of blocking it. I mean, I could probably force it to, but I might break it, so I'd rather not do that than modic it. Something like this, old and rare, I would not do that. Then let's go with the legs. The legs are on ball joints, so this is an old kid, so still on ball joints. It's not able to do splits, but it's able to move all the way forward there. All the way back, no problem. It's actually able to move around if it wasn't uh, tied by this little plas uh, belt plastic thing that it has right here on this waist. Uh, what's it called? It's like able to bend all the way there, no problem at all. As you can see right there. It's got no movement on the feet, sadly, as this thing's kind of tied together. It's only movements able to, like, left and right, up and down. No left and right, as you can see. And, uh, yeah, I can do a little bit left and right, the wiggle on the front side. Backside's only able to go front and back. That's also because of its ability to have the scooter so it can slide around. And this is a movable scooter. Yeah, that's right. This can actually spin, as you can hear right there. Uh, but yeah, that is the articulation of the Garden Mark II. It's actually a pretty nice articulation overall. Might be limited in some things, but it's actually pretty um, um, uh, flexible overall. Uh, despite being a, what, 15-year model kit. Overall, Garden Mark II is... Pretty nicely designed. Can't wait to build the Gurren Satan, which I do have and own. Uh, but that's going to be a model kit build that I'm going to do way later down the line. And with right now, let's actually do some uh, comparisons to other model kits that I have side by side. Here's right here with the Entry Great RX-78 American version. And the Lightning Full Burner. As you can see right here, well, at least these are two model kits I had with me right now at the moment. I can see right there, the Gurren is actually pretty, uh, it's a little bit bigger than what you would see for your average uh, average Gunplow right there with the RX-78 integrate being your most basic with the Lightning being slightly taller as it is Zeta based. Let's go with a couple other ones right here. Let's go with the entry grade new, which is very tall model kit and a slightly less, more shorter model kit over here being the Heavy Arms from Gundam Wing. I can see right here, this fits the whole uh, small, medium, and large situation right here. But the Gurren overall, it's actually pretty nicely designed. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty good size. A little bit uh, bigger than what you see it on regular model kits, but not as tall as the um, usually overly big ones too. 
overall, last in reviews, folks, uh, the Grand Mark II is a pretty nice model kit. Despite its age being like almost 15 years old model kit since it came out back in 2008, it's all pretty relatively nice model kit overall. Uh, articulation is pretty nice compared compared to other model kits during the time. Uh, my instance, some things uh, that are kind of like old and whatnot with the ball with the ball joints for the legs, making not be able to do splits. But they would still move around, uh, put its legs all the way up and back all all the rounds. So able to articulate pretty nicely designed. Uh, co uh, color separation is actually probably one of the better comparably to other model kits. This thing's almost anime accurate. There might be some things that might be not color wise uh, color accurate, like the blade right there. Maybe some things on the Compare and whatnot, maybe a little bit brownish, whatnot. But this, despite that, the Grand Mark II is actually a pretty nice model kit. It's also a pretty rare one. So if you see this on shelves or you see this online for a cheap price and whatnot, I would recommend getting it. It's one of those model kits where it's not, it's, I don't think there's any reprints of it anymore and whatnot. So what's it called? It's a very rare kit. So if you see it, I would get it. Even if it's a price a little bit, a little bit more than you would want to, I would still get it. It's a pretty nice model kit. I got this back when it was still available and cheaper back, what, 2016, 2017, when you still were able to find model kits for a good price, like nowadays. Uh, but I cannot wait to build its uh, upgraded form. Well, its upgraded form two times afterwards, which would be the Gurren Satan. That thing I have yet to build, but it is on my next to-do build list for that. So keep an eye out for that review when I eventually build that model kit. Uh, but besides that, it's Pyroarden with another beautiful, nicely designed Gundam Mecha, f Mecha from another good franchise, Code Geass. Sorry about the Gundam thing. It's not a Gundam, it's a nightmare frame. But with that out of the way, it's Pyroarden signing out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.